Hey there. I offer this podcast freely. Your support really makes a difference. To make a donation, visit ReneeMcKenna.com. Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee LaValle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about the four noble truths about 2,600 years ago under the Bodhi tree in which Buddha was enlightened. He stated, Life is suffering. And this is the first of what's called the Four Noble Truths. So the first noble truth is that suffering is real. The second truth is that it has a cause. The third truth, which is really good news, is that suffering has an end. And the fourth noble truth is that there is a path that leads out of suffering. And ironically, the very path that leads out of suffering may be very related with the cause of suffering itself. And from my perspective, the whole cosmic system is set up to facilitate and encourage evolution, both on a personal and on a transpersonal level, in the physical and the metaphysical. And the three basic causes of suffering, known as the three poisons in Buddhism, are greed, ignorance, and hatred. Buddhism loves numbered orders of spiritual processes, the Eightfold Path, the Twelve Links or Causes, the Four Immeasurables. And one thing I love about Buddhist philosophy, and it is much more of a philosophy than a religion at its base, is that all of the teachings are about relieving suffering. They're about self-responsibility and about relieving us of the suffering that is caused by these three poisons of greed, ignorance, and hatred. And you may not think of yourself as greedy, hateful, or ignorant, but the bad news is that we all have all three if we look deeply at ourselves. And not to contradict Buddha, but I would probably trade hatred out for fear because when we look deeply at our resentments, at our anger, at our judgment, people, places, and things that bug the hell out of us, anger, resentment, and outrage are almost always rooted in fear on a deeper level. Generally fear that myself or someone else will be harmed, fear that life doesn't make sense, fear of the ignorance and greed of other people, or even fear of our own greed and ignorance. The longer I live and the more I continue to grow, heal, and evolve myself, the more I am humbled by the magnificence, the perfection even, of the incredibly complex cosmic order that we are a part of. And over and over again, it has been shown to me that the suffering and difficulties of my own life hold the keys to my freedom within the suffering itself. That rather than turning away from my fears ignorance, and greed, when I turn toward them and live in the solutions that they call me to grow into, the deep compassion of the universal life force is always there to support my evolution. In fact, I think that's how the system is set up, at least that's what I see from my own life, that our experience in Middle Earth is like a consciousness evolution machine. And the other thing that's great about Buddhism is that they're very grounded in the idea that we get lots of tries to do it over and over again, in the idea of reincarnation, and that reincarnation itself is part of an evolutionary path on a soul level, on a meta perspective. I'm teaching a unit on past lives and past life regression in my year-long mentorship program this month. And for me, any path of healing, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, relational, that's devoid of spirituality is incomplete. That our growth out of ignorance is to expand our awareness of ourself beyond the impermanence of our physical body and physical reality in general, and to enlarge our awareness and understanding of the metaphysical. And although modern science doesn't like the idea of spirituality for the most part, the deeper and deeper we go into understanding almost anything in science, biology, physics, cosmology, it all points to the deeper questions that we're dealing with more here than meets the eye. Atoms are 99% space. 
There's a loving wisdom, an incredible interdependence in nature, in our own bodies, in this larger infinite flow that we are all a part of. And part of our ignorance and our suffering is feeling separate from that. And the huge influx of Eastern influences through meditation, mindfulness, yoga, they call us into presence. And whether we're aware of it or not, that presence brings us into awareness of our connection with the earth, with our bodies, with our breath, that we are supported. We are not alone. We are part of a larger system that cares for us and I believe actually has our highest good in mind. Now, that doesn't mean the people in our life or the institutions or systems that we're engaged in all have our highest good. And some of our evolutionary work is to move out of those systems or relationships or to evolve those institutions. Life is change, and our relationship with that change has a direct correlation with our sense of peace, joy, or fulfillment in our lives. And it is our resistance to some of the great truths or realities of earthly existence that causes a lot of our problem. And these are challenging things. Like Buddha said, life is difficult. Facing and accepting the reality of death of ourself and others is probably the big one for most of us. And underneath that really is the impermanence of all things. And our greed and our fear are directly tied to our relationship with impermanence. Fear of the unknown future, taking a challenging past and projecting it into the future. Fear that we'll lose what we already have or we won't get what we really want leads directly to greed or attachment and aversion. And this is nowhere more evident than in my experience as an addict and alcoholic. And my addiction took myriad forms. And my recovery continues very actively, practicing these principles, expanding them into ever-growing areas of my life. And I haven't run out of stuff to work on yet. And my addictions were absolutely rooted in fear and ignorance and a lot of suffering. Addiction is absolutely a trauma response. And again, from this meta perspective now, I am a trauma therapist. And my greatest suffering has become my greatest gift in its healed and transformed state. When it was just trauma, it wasn't much of a gift. But my responses to that, my greed for anything to make the pain and fear go away, drinking myself into blackouts, snorting coke until my nose bled, having sex with pretty much anyone who would have me, stealing what I wanted, eating myself into a stupor, making myself puke, and eating again. Anything to get away from the chronic anxiety, deep resentment, disconnection, and abandonment that I felt. And it was actually the suffering of my own dysfunctional solutions as an addict and alcoholic that actually drove me to the much deeper, authentic, genuine solutions that I actually needed. That it wasn't about finding the right combination of weed, coke, vodka, and emotionally unavailable men. It wasn't about losing 30 pounds or finding the right job. It was about finding a higher power that I could trust. Cleaning my own house rather than worrying about what was happening in the larger world and putting my energy into helping others in a selfless way, asking what can I bring rather than what can I get, practicing faith over fear and forgiveness and compassion over judgment, self-rationalization and justified resentment, to clean up my sexual behavior, my gluttony around food, to grow in courage, hope and accountability. I'm still trying to grow in those things. And if you want a really simple tip, of where it might benefit you to grow. Look at something that's causing difficulty, pain, or suffering in your life, and where do you feel stuck or blocked or in a repetitive cycle that you can't get out of? Our pain points show us exactly where we need to heal and evolve. And if it seems impossible, ooh, that might be even better because then you're really going to have to take a leap. My last podcast was on surrender. 
number 165. And there's a great mystery that when we come to the edge of all the light that we know and step off into the darkness of the unknown, that one of two things will happen. We will be given something solid to stand on, or we will be given wings to fly. And I have to say that stepping off place, although it's gotten easier over time, calls me to levels of faith, needing help from other people, and my own inner courage that are always extremely challenging. But facing and embracing life's challenges actually makes us stronger, more resilient, wiser, and more connected. And each stage of my continued recovery and expansion, again, of healing my greed, my ignorance, my fears and resentments, has brought me to new places I couldn't imagine. When I was five years sober, I stopped smoking cigarettes. I cried every day for about 18 months. I hadn't had access to my emotions because I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day for decades. Every time I had a feeling, I'd just light a butt. <laughs> When I was 10 years sober, I got into sexual and relational recovery, transforming my codependent and dysfunctional patterns in my sex and love addiction, trading my obsession with the emotionally unavailable and becoming emotionally available myself. As I came to discover that I was the common denominator in all my relationships, and it wasn't about finding the right person, it was about me becoming the right person. And I think that that is a truism in all areas of our life, that genuine lasting change is the interplay of internal transformation and external change. And if I change the inside and don't change the outside, continuing to live and participate in dysfunction will probably pull me back down into it. And if I just change the outside and don't change the inside to match, then I often end up in imposter syndrome, the huge gap between how things look externally and my internal experience of them. And that dissonance, again, is a call to grow and to heal those parts of myself that feel inadequate or unworthy. And so there's lots of different systems to help us grow and evolve out of suffering. Buddhism is one, and most of the great spiritual and religious traditions do provide those instructions and support mystical Christianity if you participate in all the sacraments, the Eightfold Path of Buddhism, the 12 Steps of the Anonymous Programs, of which there are like 150 for almost any problem you could have, deep Judaism, Hinduism. Western therapy will get you there to some extent, but I think it is imperative to have a community of support and a spiritual practice. Again, the three, I don't know if they call them the three pillars, but I'll call them that. The three pillars of Buddhism is the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And that's like an equilateral triangle that's a solution to the three poisons of fear, ignorance, and greed. And the Buddha is the connection with the larger consciousness system and our humility to realize that we are not God and that there is something larger happening that we need to grow in trust and understanding of and conscious connection with. The Dharma is the teachings. And again, there are many great teachings of self-transformation, purification, evolution, and service. And the Sangha is the community, the place that we receive and give into. And many of us are disconnected from authentic community in modern life. And I have to say, it remains a great hope of mine to be able to help facilitate, participate in, and create opportunities for community connection, because it has been so foundational, it remains foundational in my own life. So I wish you awareness of your own suffering, the ability to look deeply at the causes of ignorance, fear, and greed or aversion that lie within yourself, and the courage to step on the path to freedom. Thank you so much for listening. I'm actively praying for ways to create community of support for each other. I'm very excited. My 10-session course on healing trauma is available on Insight Timer. It's a really gentle but powerful process and practice for spiritual connection and deep healing of unresolved emotional issues. You can follow my Insight Timer link and also check out some of the free workshops that I'll have on Insight Timer in the weeks to come. 
Next Wednesday, March 8th, I'll be doing Balancing Inner Masculine and Feminine, looking at our relationship with intellect and intuition, the yin yang aspects of ourself, and how to develop a more healthy internal ecosystem. Wednesday, March 15th, Dissolving the Inner Critic. Most of us have an inner critic that's an outworn or dysfunctional defensive structure that needs to be updated or dissolved completely. Really powerful practice based on the feeding your demons process of Tibetan Buddhism. And Wednesday, March 12th, manifesting through the chakras, understanding our own clear path to manifesting our ideas and inspirations into the world and places we may get blocked along the way and how to open those blocks. If you're a therapist, healer, empath, or energy worker, and you want to expand your skills and practices in a really grounded and practical way, learn the profound tools of spiritual psychology. I'm taking applications for my year-long mentorship program that will start next September. And there are some prerequisites. So shoot me an email, info at ReneeMcKenna.com. You can check that out on my website. The mentorship does provide a really incredible community of like-minded light workers in the world. Blessings on your path. Until we meet again, this is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.